A few weeks ago, I found a video from Bruce Yaney where he demonstrates a string shooter. This device keeps a simple loop of string suspended in the air. Once in motion, the string takes on some counterintuitive properties and lets you do some experiments with waves. We'll put a link to the original video in the show notes. Dad showed this to me and I thought this looked like a cool project. Something we could complete over the winter break. Our initial materials included two AA battery packs, the necessary batteries, two DC hobby motors, rubber wheels that will do the job of shooting the string out, and a switch. To keep things simple, we decided to wire each motor to its own dedicated battery pack. However, we still needed to be able to turn on both motors at the same time. Since we had two separate circuits, one for each motor, we needed a double pole switch. The number of poles represents the number of circuits that switch that the switch can control. When you flip the switch, both circuits would be completed so both motors will get power at the same time. We used a small breadboard to make things easier to, to wire up and some hookup wire. We're showing the red and black wire here, but as you'll see later, we ended up using green and orange to help us keep everything straight. We started by mounting the wheels onto the motors. Lucy slid the wheels on and then tightened the set screws that would hold them in place on the axles. Next, we attached wires to the motors. One of the things we discovered building the Raspberry Pi rover in August 2015 was that the very thin copper leads for the motors wouldn't tolerate any amount of flex in the wires. So we zip tied the wires to the motor bodies to take the strain off of those leads. Before I move on, I think that we should point out that we intentionally wired up the motors so that they would spin in opposite directions to each other. Once we had the wires hooked up, I hooked up one of the battery packs directly to each of the motors using the breadboard and made sure they both spun up. Next, I soldered on wires to our switch. And then, like the motors, I zip-tied those wires to the switch body for strength. With all of the electronics sorted out, it was time to build the frame. We made it out of some scrap wood and tried to construct it to roughly match the one that Bruce Yeeney used in his video. These four pieces would eventually fit together to look like this. The hardest part was figuring out how to mount the motors to the wood. I decided the simplest way would be to carve out a slot for the zip ties to fit down in, allowing the motor to sit on the wood flush. Then we drill holes for two additional zip ties to strap the motors onto the wood. This worked well. The motors ended up being very solidly attached. Dad, I just realized you've been injured for both of the last two podcasts. Is there a trend here? Um, no, that's pure coincidence. Okay, but if you show up in the next one with an eye patch. Uh, don't worry, I won't go all Nick Fury on you. Dad, you're awesome, but you're no Nick Fury. Hey! Moving on, now that we have the motors mounted to the first piece of wood, we needed to mount that piece to the angled one. That meant carving out more space for the zip ties to fit down in, so that the two pieces of wood could sit flush. Then. Dad nailed the two pieces together. To attach the base pieces and the upright pieces together, we settled on flat metal plates. We found where the first plate would attach, traced the screw holes with a pencil, and pre-drilled the holes. Dad clamped the base pieces down so I could screw the first plate on. Then we found where the second plate would fit and pre-drilled the holes for those screws. With the second plate attached, the frame was nice and sturdy. Next, we needed to build a path for the string to feed into the motors. In Bruce's video, it looked like he had a drinking straw duct taped onto the side and fed the string through it. We used that as our starting point. However, before even attaching the straw to the frame, we found a problem. The knot in the string would frequently catch on the leading edge. We needed to find a way to do a better job of guiding the string in. Lucy had the great idea of cutting little slits into the straw and then bending the pieces out to make sort of a funnel. 
To make that funnel as smooth as possible, I took a couple of our concave Lego pieces and drilled out the centers. Then I fit one on top of the, of the straw pieces and another below them, adding a little super glue in between. We fed the string through and then duct taped it to the side of the shooter, which gave the string an easy path right into the motors. Now that we had it all together, it was time to try it out and run some experiments. Okay, so here's some other cool things about the string shooter. So if you tap it along the bottom, you get this nice wave along the bottom. You get one on the bottom and on the top. Now, there's also this weird thing. The waves travel travel either much slower or just slower than the string itself. And I don't actually know on why it does that, but it'd be cool to find out. You may notice that our loop is much smaller than Bruce's. We originally tried a longer loop, but the motors couldn't keep it in the air, and so we, so we shortened it. Bruce also picked his uh, string shooter up and moved it around, showing that the string loop didn't need a table to support it. We can't do that with ours. Again, the string will droop. We think there, that there may be a couple of differences between our string shooter and Bruce's. First. He may have used a lighter string that allowed him to build a longer loop. We used contwine, but we're wondering if he used something like nylon. With the nylon loop, we may be able to avoid another issue, the knot. You'll hear in our video the thump, thump, thump as the knot passes through the motor's wheels, but you don't hear that with Bruce string shooters. With the nylon loop, you could theoretically connect the ends by just melting them together rather than them in a knot. We also wondered if Bruce used stronger motors than we did. Eh, a few things for us to try. You know, the loop of the string looks like a whale. A whale? Yeah, definitely a whale.